I all of a sudden saw myself, not the London. <laughs> but it was connected. There is, there is also a commercial about a woman who uses the shirt of her husband in five different ways. She can wear it and show you then how wonderful, what wonderful things she can do with them. That is coupled to a television to one of my lectures and how they, there's no connection. <laughs> but it is. And the only reason why they do that is because they think that more people will watch it. That's the only reason why they do it. Yeah. Sarah, you had a question. Yeah, have you, have you noticed the difference in students' comprehension? Have I noticed what? A difference in the comprehension of students sitting in a lecture hall and watching the professor and like surrounded by other students versus watching the lecture on a screen by themselves. Be more specific. Have I seen? Like do your students learn and remember better if they're in a lecture hall? watching the video, or in a lecture yeah. hall watching a blackboard, or by themselves watching a We, we have very little statistics on that. Have you noticed it? Like, do you have any idea? I have no way of knowing, because the two million people who watch my lectures don't take my exams. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, they may take my exams at home, so but I don't teach you. so I have no way of judging. The only advantage of e-learning would have it's taken by a lot of people who have full-time jobs during the day. And so now they can say, okay, uh, I want half of all the lectures tonight, and the other half tomorrow. And then maybe three days nothing. And so they can set their own pace. That's an enormous advantage. They're not going to get certificates until they're going to take Angel 1X. Then they will get certificates, but they, that's not yet. So they can set their own pace. That may be a plus for learning better, and sink in better, they can digest it better. But I really don't know. I, I, there is no there is no statistics on that. No. Professor, how do you feel about Teal? <laughs> I prefer not to talk about that. <laughs> Do you think that there isn't any value to actually being in an environment where everyone else is also learning the same thing? I think about half the things I've learned this year have just been from being around other people. You, you were saying that you were saying that for a certain subject, you think that it's like there's it's no better to actually be in, be at the university than just watching it online. But do you think there isn't that much benefit to being in the environment of the university? Absolutely. Absolutely. Part of growing up, social life, no question, very important. Um, but do you think it's a significantly bad thing that people who <coughs> their courses online would be well, trying to practice that? It, it, it's, it's not a plus, so they, they, they lack something that is crucially important if I think back of my, my years in the university then the way I grew up in that environment with my friends uh, and the social structure, they formed me in a way, yeah. and that you miss. Yeah. Uh, so there's no question that there is an enormous plus about being just sitting here eat that soup, right? <laughs> but now think of the alternative. If you are live, if you live in Bangladesh, you can't eat that soup. Yeah. You can't eat it. Yeah. You can't take the courses. Yeah. That's the way you have to think, and that is fantastic. Yeah. That's truly fantastic. That's why I would like to see that all the universities will give those certificates for free. I would like to see that. That's probably not going to happen. Professor Lynn, do you think that these videos can be a way out of the cycle of poverty for some people? What was the question? I didn't understand the question. I, I didn't understand it either. Okay, sorry. Um, do you think that like 
like watching these lectures and receiving this education, even if it's, you know, from online, even if you can't get a certificate, do you think that it can be a way to break the cycle of poverty? You think that watching the videos online and getting an education in this way could somehow break the cycle of poverty? Of course. Education is broadening your horizon. That enriches your life. That improves your the possibilities and of getting positions. There's no question. You can wipe out complete poverty with education. Not with a bad education, <laughs> but with education. Oh, no question. I mean, think about the slums in India where people have no education. How do they break out of that? Their father was in the slums, their grandfather was in the slums, they will be in the slums. Nothing they can do. They have no education. They can't stop it. So the kind of jobs that they get, cleaning toilets, if they're lucky. Oh, no question. Okay. They will get jobs, and that means ultimately it's slow process. What kind of jobs do you think that, that like, for instance, OCW, like taking courses from OCW could enable them to get? Seeing as that they, like, Assuming they can't even they can't afford the certificate program, saying that they just learned the material from OCW, you know, how can they how can they then use that to get a better job? What kind of job can, would they be able to get a better job? Well, I think that's that's where MIT X would come in. The moment that you can show certificates, you have something to show. But before that point, you don't really think that it could have that kind of impact. Uh, you mean whether MIT X could have that impact? Like OCW, she, she says, OCW without certificate, you think that it could still make a difference? Oh, yes, but not as pronounced perhaps as a certificate. I get at least once, at least once a week, email from someone this morning. I'm a bus driver. You made me love physics. I've decided to stop being a bus driver. I go back to school. I hear that again and again and again. No. That they really give up their job and go back to school. I never ask them then, do you have a wife and seven children and who's going to pay for them? I just say that's fantastic that you did that. And there are many many, hundreds every year who tell me that they totally changed their lifestyle. And then they, they have the classic words, you, Walter Lewin, have changed my life. And that's true. That I totally changed their lives. Yeah. And there, there are cases whereby they were doing lousy in school. They were bad and they flunked out of university. And then they see the lectures. They see my, some of my lectures. And then they say, this is fantastic. I've got to do this. And they go back to the university. And they score straight A's. Maybe not all of them. The ones who score F don't, don't write me. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a selection effect. Oh, yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah. You, 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 you widen their horizons. And as a bus driver, your horizons are very narrow. And then you see all of a sudden that there is more. It is interesting. And, and many, many of them break out. Oh, well, that effect I, I see almost every day. Yes. For fellows that are thinking of going to academia, do you have any advice for, um, for us to how to prepare ourselves to be a better teacher? You know that I get that question at least 20 times a day. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know you. And therefore, I cannot advise you. It depends on the person, it depends on your passion, it depends on your discipline, which I do not know how well, how you were educated, your relationship with your parents your motivation, there is, no, there is no silver bullets for, for 
the best way of doing it. Some people are brilliant and get away with almost no preparation. And others have to do it more. I, I, if I knew you well, I could give you advice, but I don't know you. All I can say, but those are easy words. And what I'm telling you is the truth. Every exam that I ever took in my life at the university, I knew for 100% before I took it that I was going to pass it. Now, maybe not with an A, but that I was going to pass it. But no, but I always prepared to the point that I could not fail. And all of you should reach that goal too. So it should never be a gamble that you say, okay, I'm going to take it tomorrow. Maybe it doesn't work out. Maybe it does. And if I fail well, I can always take it. I think that's a very bad habit. You should be prepared to the point that you have no doubt you will pass. Maybe with a C, but you will pass. In other words, you've looked at all the exams of the previous years. You've done all the, the problem sets that you can possibly do. You've talked to seniors and juniors. There are Bibles at every dormitory here at MIT. You've studied those, bi those Bibles. Uh, professors, almost without exception, including myself, are basically lazy. So they want to do the minimum that they can. And so they sometimes throw in problems that they have given before. <laughs> well, you should take advantage of them. You begin, to, you begin to recognize that kind of the way they ask the questions. And so you should concentrate on that professor who is teaching that year, not on someone else who taught the previous year. But I'm, I'm sure I'm not telling you anything that you don't know yet. <laughs> but when you take that exam, you have to go in there with absolute certainty that you will pass. We have time for about one more question. At oh. 2 o'clock, a lot of people have to go to biology. I don't know if you can say that another people have to go at 2. So. Now, before you leave, I, I brought something for you. Um, I thought you might like that. I'm not sure. But I asked uh, all your names. Paula sent me all your names. And so, here, here for instance, I have Andrew. Is Andrew here? I'm not going to hand them out to everyone. So it says, oh, oh, and I signed it. And so, if your name was on the list, then you can get it from Paula today. If your name is not on the list, if your name is not on the list, I brought blanks. <laughs> so I can write them right here. But since there are so many, uh, you will have to hand them out. Yes. In, in between every one is a blank piece of paper, because when I wrote it, I used some very special ink, and the ink uh, penetrates in the back. Do you need a special pen now? No, 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 I, I brought that pen. Oh. <laughs> I'm a physicist. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you see, it goes back. Yes. If you do this, then it's right yes. up. Yeah. Well, that's what I gave her, should leave Arissa. Take a bow. She cooks. Arissa cooks. Arissa. Here's the pen. <laughs> <laughs> For those who have to leave, no. you, if you have biology, the rest can stay a little bit. know whose names were not on it. We can also do the following yes. that you send me by email the names of the people who are here. I, I can write, do it right now. If either one is fine. If they, if they want to wait, I will write it right away. Um, what do you want to do, guys? Because you, you have class. Yeah. Well, let's just, they have class now. Okay, so they, they give you their name, and then I pass by you. And then I will write them again, and then I'll make sure you go. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Those are thirty already. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I'm going to. <laughs> yeah, sure.